The biggest reason Ukraine is losing the war is because the hard right in the Congress has paralyzed the United States from acting. That's it. That's the reason. Speaker Johnson has to decide for himself whether or not he will do the right thing for Ukraine, for America, and for democracy, or if he'll allow MAGA Republicans to hand Vladimir Putin a large victory. So somehow, Senator, the Ukraine-Russia war, is somehow it's, it's on us now? Is this a proxy war for us? Well, I would hardly describe giving $113 billion worth of weapons and money and paying for their salaries and their pensions and their small business loans. I would hardly call that nothing. Schumer said that basically the U.S. has done nothing. So he's saying the $113 billion that's already been spent over there is nothing. No, I think we've done the lion's share of the work over there. and We had to borrow the money we sent them. But the bottom line is, is Russia is a bigger country with a bigger army and they can probably afford to lose five soldiers for every one soldier on the Ukraine size and still last, maybe outlast them. I'm not for Russia winning. I mean, Russia's the aggressor here. I, I hope Ukraine can maintain their independence. But for Schumer to say that it's our, you know, preeminent responsibility, well, our responsibility is first to America and first to our Constitution. Right. And really, that has to be having a fiscal uh, a fiscally upright ship. We, we've got to have a ship that's not borrowing. We, got, we borrowed a trillion dollars in the first six months this year. We're going to borrow $2 trillion this year, and that's not the kind of fiscal uh, arrangement you need to have when you're asked to send another $100 billion. So Speaking of writing your fiscal ship and also people we're borrowing money from, take a listen to Janet Yellen threatening China if they get involved. Listen. I stress that companies, including those in the PRC, must not provide material support for Russia's war and that they will face significant consequences if they do. Senator, she does realize that all the companies in the PRC also are partly owned by the PRC, People's Republic of China. Well, there's a stick and a carrot. I mean, uh, you tell China... And you're right, China owns a lot of the different companies that are involved here. You tell them they can't do it or else, well, I don't know that that necessarily is the way they're going to respond to that. That's, a car that's the stick. Where's the carrot? You know, there needs to be every day we're doing something more to separate ourselves from China. And you can argue the rightness or wrongness of that. But as we separate from them and as we sanction them and as we do less business with them, we have less influence, actually. Now, threatening to do some of those things and not doing them. So, for example, we could say to China, we're considering, you know, dissolving these trade arrangements, but we might not. If you don't supply weapons to Ukraine, we might consider keeping some of these trade arrangements. Then you have something that you have to trade. But just scolding China like a, a teenage child, they're going to react like a teenage child. And to the scolding, they're going to, you know, say, whatever, do whatever you want. We're going to do whatever we want. And we continue to separate. And I think really there needs to be more discussion of, of the trade-offs of continuing trade versus not continuing trade and what China is willing to do. Are they willing to behave and be a country, a civilized nation with regard to, you know, the, the virus that began in Wuhan? Are we able to get some arrangements by saying, we'll continue this if you do that? That's what we should be doing. But just threatening them or scolding them will have no effect. Very quickly, one more soundbite. And this one scares the living daylights out of us. Me, I'm sure it did you as well. Anthony Blinken suggesting uh, bringing Ukraine into NATO. And he sounds like he means right now. Listen. Ukraine will become a member uh, of NATO. Uh, our purpose at the summit is to help build a bridge to that membership uh, and uh, to create a clear pathway for uh, for Ukraine uh, moving forward. Scare you as much as scares us, Senator? Well, by saying that, he ensures the destruction of Ukraine. He ensures the ongoing destruction of Ukraine. If you want to bring peace or if you want Ukrainians to get back some of their land, one thing they might offer is this. They're losing the war. They're at a stalemate, but they want some of their land back, and it is their land. They should offer to Russia, we'll permanently... Uh, forego being part of NATO. We'll permanently become an unaligned nation with a foot in the east and a foot in the west, and we won't become part of NATO if you'll give us some of our land back and quit attacking us. Now, that would be a reasonable offer. Would Russia take it? Would Russia be believable? I don't know, but it's something you can offer. If you take NATO and you say they're absolutely going to be a NATO, what do you have to offer Russians? The Russians occupy part of Ukraine. 
What if you, the only way they're leaving is if they probably voluntarily left at this point. So there are a couple of things that could be offered. More autonomy to the Eastern Donbass, more local elections. There are many Russian ethnic uh, Ukrainians who live in those areas. More autonomy for voting and perhaps that Ukraine wouldn't be a NATO. Those two things could be offered in peace discussions in return for the Russian troops leaving uh, the Donbass or for peace. But if you take those off the table, you have nothing to offer in peace negotiations.